thank you very much for uh, coming uh, in number. Uh, after this uh, good uh, plenary session about uh, the report, and after all this uh, discussion about how to change reports and how to uh, help each other uh, from processes perspective and from data collection, uh, I have the pleasure to uh, give the floor to uh, Madame uh, Lina uh, Ngomba to uh, take care about this uh, planner now. Uh, Madam, the floor is for you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Salam alaikum. Mor <laughs> morning, everyone. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Lina Gumba. I'm a senior statistician with the NSO, that is the National Statistics Office in Kenya. And I'm also the EGH uh, vice chair. So moving first to the topic of today, so we are to discuss a very exciting topic on new data needs uh, for the digital economy. As we know, the evolution of technical changes, way people, the way they do business, the way they communicate, and the way they live, and hence the digital services grants consumers and producers closer access uh, to global markets, and this enhances also the uptake of e-commerce. Uh, due to these new digital services. Uh, we also note that as the new digital services are coming up, we also have global environment challenges uh, which arise uh, such as e-wastes. With all these statistical needs, it is important to these trends and support development of evidence-based uh, policies in the digital economy. And today we have our panelists who are going to discuss more further of these topics. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Alexandra Barbosa, who is the head of CETIC in Brazil, and he is also the EGH chair. Mr. Barbosa, floor is yours. A uh, very good morning to all of you. It's a great pleasure to be here with you today to share the results of the expert group on household indicators. And as uh, Lina has uh, mentioned, uh, more and more we need the uh, data to measure uh, the digital economy and also the international agendas that uh, our member states uh, have signed, such as the 23rd Agenda on the Sustainable Development Goals. So before I go to the main issues that we have discussed and agreed in the expert group, I just would like to recall the need of uh, producing uh, comparable, internationally comparable data and also the scope of the EGH. Well, I, I think that all of us agree that ICT has become a crucial component in uh, the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and here we have the three pillars, economic growth, social inclusion, and enviro enviro environmental sustainability. And of course, that to measure the progress that countries are making, it is uh, needed data. And ICT indicators is of utmost importance. And we have a, as a mission to produce a proper methodology for measurement and to have uh, comparable data. And uh, of course, more and more, we need disaggregated data. Well, uh, the, scope, the scope of the work that has been carried out by the expert group, I would like to highlight the three major uh, mission that we have to review existing and to develop new indicators on household ICT access and individual use of ICTs, uh, to periodically, per periodically review the ITU manual for measuring ICT access and use by households and individuals, and to work in close cooper cooperation with the expert group on telecom and ICT indicators, the, the ICT. 
And the expert group has been uh, receiving contribution, contributions on the online forum since 2012. It's an ongoing activity. We had our fifth face-to-face uh, -face meeting in Geneva last uh, September. And we have seven topics that we have discussed. And we have received six, six contributions uh, throughout 2017. And today we have uh, uh, more than 500 registered participants. And the seven topics that we have uh, opened in the online forum are related to development of new indicators, disaggregation of ICT statistics by disability, improving data availability of ICT statistics, uh, methodological issues. We have a few uh, points that we have discussed. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, we also, uh, since three years ago, we have been giving uh, uh, much focus on country uh, experiences so that we can share lessons learned by countries. We also uh, have a, a topic related to big data for official statistics and future work. And I would like to start uh, by saying that this year was the first time that we uh, uh, achieved to build three very important background documents to give support to our discussions that we have uh, in the EGH. And the three documents that we have produced, and I hope that we can continue for the uh, future to have uh, all the discussion supported by uh, literature review, by country's experience, by empirical data, so that we can really make uh, decisions on methodologies, on indicators, on definitions and concepts based on uh, previous documentation that is shared with member states. And this year we had one document related to measuring and aggregating ICT skills. Uh, all these documents are available to all of you on the online uh, forum. So the first document is improving the measurement of ICT skills through household surveys. The second one is improving the measurement of e-commerce activities. And the last document was proposal for definition of smartphone. Well, let me start by saying that uh, the main topics that we have discussed in our last face-to-face -face meeting in Geneva was related to measurement of ICT skills, new indicators to expand the measurement of e-commerce activities, technical definition of smartphones, uh, revision of indicators uh, H88, which is a location of internet use. The H88 uh, is the proportion of individuals using the internet by location. And in this particular case, uh, we had to rethink about some concepts. For, for instance, uh, when you are using the inter accessing the internet in movement, in the trains or buses or in a, a public square. So uh, this uh, was a very important discussion. Data availability and disaggregation of ICT statistics for sustainable development agenda. And as I mentioned, country experience related to designing and implementing ICT households. Uh, the first topic was related to uh, the ICT skills. It is very important to mention that we have two indicators that has been collected by ITU, which is the individuals using the internet by type of activities, which is the HH9 and HH15, individuals with ICT skills by type of skills. Those are the two uh, existing indicators, very relevant for measuring skills. And uh, the group decided to, cr to create a subgroup to work on ICT skills measurement, especially to define a conceptual framework for, uh, uh, with its definition and dimensions to be measured, uh, review the two indicators that I have mentioned, H89 and H815, and to prepare a document with a proposal for the next EG8 uh, meeting in 2018. Uh, last year, we had several inputs from external uh, 
research, academic researchers and also international organizations such as OECD that has been dealing with the, me the measurement of ICT skills. This is a, a challenge to measure, to proper measure, measure uh, ICT skills and this subgroup is, uh, its mandate is to define and create a document that will be a proposal that will be approved by the EGH in 2018. Uh, E-commerce is the second point that was uh, a, a very active point of discussion in the EGH. And what we discussed was the need to improve, enhance the measurement of e-commerce. And the group has decided to include in the list of the ITU ICT household indicators the following new indicators type of goods and service purchased online, payment uh, channels for the purchase, reasons uh, individuals don't purchase online, the barriers, and methods of delivery. So those uh, are the new indicators that the group has decided to include in the ICT household indicators. Regarding the uh, definition of a smartphone, the group came up with a new definition that was approved by the group, defining a smartphone as a device which has smart capabilities, including internet-based uh, service and performance main of the functions of a computer, including uh, having an operating system capable of downloading and running applications, also those by 30 parts developers. And this is particularly important for three indicators re related to the uh, mobile phones. The first one is the indicator on the access of mobile phones, which is the H83. Mobile phones usage, 8810. Uh, and mobile phone ownership, 8818. Uh, Related the location of internet access. The indicator H8A uh, need to be revised since not only the smartphone that have capability of access in the internet has uh, uh, been growing very fast in most countries, but also the availability of Wi-Fi access has made the existing response categories not so clear uh, and then we decided to create a subgroup to review this indicator uh, so that we, came up, came, we can uh, decide about new response categories in terms of uh, location. And finally, the future work that has been approved by the EG8 is related to several topics. To begin with, the ICT skills the revision of H8.9 uh, and H8.15 uh, within the subgroup that was uh, created, the revision of indicator H8.8 on the location of internet uh, use or access, uh, a new area of measurement that was identified as uh, policy relevant was on cybersecurity. And in this particular uh, topic, we had decided to conduct a joint work with uh, EGT, the expert group on telecom and ICT indicators. Uh, also, we have decided to further investigate digital content services uh, as part of the H89. The H89 is the use of internet by activities, online activities. E waste was another topic of interest of the group for future work, uh, child online protection, IoT, and uh, we also decided to keep this tradition that we have been uh, uh, carrying out for the last three years on sharing experience on methodological work. This is very important. Uh, the expert group has become also a space for capacity building because we are exchanging lessons learned from uh, conducting household surveys. Continuing experience sharing on how to improve data availability 
to support uh, the SDGs, especially in terms of uh, data disaggregation. Uh, we also decided to continue experience sharing in implementing household surveys and disseminate resulting results using data visualization tools. And yesterday we had a very good example from Mexico in terms of data visualization. And we also uh, decided to keep the big data topic in our agenda and we are willing to uh, discuss and sharing experience on the use of big data sources to produce ICT related statistics. So with this I finish my presentation and those are the main topics that we have discussed throughout the year and that we have uh, came up with a decision in the, our last face-to-face -face meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Alexandra, and for highlighting such an in-depth uh, presentation showing the kind of work that the EGH uh, members have been working on and the kind of future work that we'll be having from uh, now on going forward. And also for highlighting that we have 518 members. And if you have not registered for the EGH, please do so. And if you have done so, be active in the uh, conversations, the comments, and the discussions that are made. And now I want to uh, invite uh, Mr. Keith Bald, uh, who is going to talk on the e-waste, one of the, the topic for future works uh, in the EGH. Um, Mr. Keith uh, Balde works with uh, Statistics in Netherlands, and he is also uh, works with the United Nations University. I guess he has two jobs. And uh, he is also a member of board of directors of the Dutch Waste Electronic and Electronic Appliance uh, Register. Mr. Keys, the floor is yours. Thank you for this kind introduction. And also, thank you for inviting me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, in this presentation, I will, uh, will tell you something about e-waste. I don't, well, and its relation uh, with the global problems that we are having with e-waste. So first of all, I think it's very important to tell you what we mean with e-waste, because some people think that e-waste are the megabytes or like gigabytes on your hard drive that you don't use. Well, that's a waste as well. However, we look at the physical waste. So what happens after you have discarded your CRT monitor? What happens after you have discarded your lamp or your small IT or your fridge? This is e-waste to us. And e-waste is basically every appliance which you have to discard after um, which runs on a battery or runs on a plug. So it's, it's a very broad definition. <clears throat> and e-waste is one of the fastest growing waste streams nowadays. And this is, of course, being fueled up by the rapid consumption of uh, uh, electronic goods and of the uh, information society that we are now working in. Well, as a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, 41.8 million metric tons of e-waste were, were generated across the whole globe. Well, I know that you guys are used in, and girls are, are used to think in you know, gigabytes and megabytes. So this is uh, like a tonnage. And this is, this is, this is the, the, the same mass as 4,500 Eiffel Towers of e-waste being generated each year. Of course, this shouldn't be a problem if all of this e-waste is being collected and recycled. However, unfortunately, only six and a half megatons are being collected and recycled of this e-waste. We also know that, that, that roughly 0.7 a million metric tons are being thrown in a waste bin, so people don't know what to do with it, so they just throw it in, in the waste bin. And, and the majority of the e-waste, we simply don't know where it ends up. It can be traded, it can be recycled under suspicious conditions, so not meeting the right safety standards for the workers, or it can simply be dumped. So, based, so this is the problem of e-waste, and it's a problem because we know that across the globe there are large you know, dump sites of e-waste, and we don't know how this e-waste ends up there. And of course, I don't need to convince you 
that we need data and policies to see how we can solve this, this you know, problem. And also another problem regarding e-waste is not the uh, environmental problem that you see on the graph here, but it's also that we lack data from the countries on e-waste. Well, to date, there are only 41 countries across the globe that produce and collect data on recycling statistics on e-waste. And I think if we need to know West, uh, if we are uh, improving on the management of e-waste, we need to improve the quality of the recycling statistics. I don't, um, and we need to work on that as well to find you know, best practices across the globe. So at this stage, we have really bad data if it comes to recycling statistics on e-waste. We have bad, in and with this bad data, we make bad information. And of course, if you have bad information, no one wants to fund this. And this is also partly reflected that uh, across the globe, we have some regions with policies on e-waste, but most of the regions don't have policies on e-waste. And this is a negative cycle because if you have you know, bad funding, you're not gonna produce high quality data. With, so you can understand that this is a negative cycle. <clears throat> well, to, to date, I uh, will show you, well, most of the statistics on e-waste is coming from the waste statistics. This is where uh, the, the, the United Nations University, where I work, we collect with uh, UN Statistical Division and the OECD and UNECE as well. And with them, we have around 41 countries across the globe that produce st statistics on, you know, on you know, e-waste. But I think that this is not enough. We need to do more. And e-waste, is, is, it is quite complex, so we need to find new puzzles to solve this problem. And I think there are two uh, potential new puzzles which I will discuss now, which is big data and household statistics. With household st statistics, I mentioned before that the whereabouts of the e-waste is largely unknown. And e-waste is being you know, ge uh, generated at a household level, mostly. So we can also ask the households, what have you done with your e-waste? It's not a stupid question, because most households can, would be able to, to say, Yes or no? Well, well, yeah, what, did I, what did I do with my fridge when I discarded it last year? Did I hand it over to a recycler? Or did I just give it to a friend? Or did I, um, uh, you know, just gave it uh, to someone who is like, who's likely to trade it afterwards? And with this knowledge, we can learn more about the household behavior and um, also whether we are improving with the recycling of the e-waste, because I think the, the whole recycling chain from, uh, uh, from the waste management, it starts with the households and it ends up with the final recycler. And if the household is making the right choice, it will be recycled in a, in a better way. So, so, so therefore, I think we can use the household st statistics as a very important piece of the puzzle to, reprove, uh, to improve the, the data on e-waste. Another idea is to use big data. And with big data, I think I don't need to convince you that this is the future. And I think we can also uh, give a big boost in, in terms of data on e-waste statistics, and secondly, improving the recycling of e-waste. So what if you are a person like this, having an old television in your home? What should I do with it? I don't want it anymore. Ah, I saw an ad on television. I can, uh, I can have my phone. Everyone in the world has a, has a phone nowadays. I can uh, text this number. I have an old television. I want it, it to be picked up. I live there, who can pick it up? And then it will be sent to a server which is looking which of the waste collectors are, are close by. It's gonna be three or four or maybe 10 or, or 15 of, the, of them. And then the one who's responding first said, hey, I will pick it up for you. And then later this person 
comes to uh, 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 pick it up at your house and uh, your e-waste will be recycled by this guy. The good thing about this is that this will work in developed countries and in developing countries. And secondly, if you, can, if you link this to a centralized server, which is uh, connecting the households with the recyclers, then you can also ensure that these recyclers are, uh, are, are recycling the e-waste the e with the right standards. And I think this is very important. And thirdly, if we have a centralized like, you know, way how to link these two people together, we also have data. How much is e-waste you know, being collected through the service? And then, of course, you know, the person is, well, like, like both are happy because the, I don't have my television. I, I want it to, to discard, and this waste a, a recycler has a, has a business. <clears throat> so I think we are now in a situation where we have really bad data and bad information and bad funding for e-waste statistics and for e-waste hero, hero policies. And I have discussed with you, this, this is a negative perpetual cycle. But e-waste, it also contains a lot of uh, valuable materials. It contains gold, it contains rare earths, but also hazardous materials. But I think with e-waste, we can also create a you know, positive cycle, because if you recycle e-waste, your country can create green jobs, and you can um, also have healthy and good jobs for your own population. And we can do this with with better policies, but you know, better policies, you also need to reserve you know, money to produce the right data, because where is the e-waste end like ending up now? We don't know. And with this good data, we can provide good information so that businesses and like entrepreneurs can make the right business models in your country to, to collect and to recycle e-waste and to create jobs. And with, good in and with good information, everyone thinks that, yeah, of course, we need to fund this because we can make like, good information with this. So I think with e-waste, we, we can definitely go from like a negative a perpetual cycle to a positive one, because there is a lot of money in e-waste. In e and therefore, we have uh, joined our forces with ITU and with, the, and with ISWA to, you know, join, uh, to create the global e-waste, uh, so the global partnership for e-waste statistics. And in this partnership, we want to uh, improve um, the policies on e-waste with evidence-based data. Uh, we, want to, we want to improve the policies with evidence... We want to increase the evidence-based policies. Oh, I shouldn't read from the screen. This, will, this messes up. <laughs> and we want to raise awareness with this. And we want to raise awareness with this, with, uh, with you know, p a publications. Uh, next month, we will be having our second a global e-waste monitor. It, 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 it will be launched, I think, 13th of December, and with global workshops and, and also potentially e-learning courses. And with this data, we can measure the impact on e-waste of the sustainable development goals, and we can also you know, measure the, the, the targets on e-waste in, in ITU's a Connect 2020 agenda. And all the documentation and methodologies that we have developed in, this, um, in, the, in the global partnership, well, I won't talk about them, but you can find them all online in the link that, which is there. Well, thank you for your, present, uh, for your time. <clears throat> Um, thank you, Mr. Balde, for such a lovely uh, presentation. We agree that uh, the e-waste actually affects all of us. Two to three years to come, I'm so sure all the gadgets, maybe you are having the mobile phones, the computers, at some point you have new ones. So what are you going to do with the old ones? And that, uh, I guess, it can be collected from the household statistics. And also for the better policies on how to deal with e-waste, it's good to have better data. And that's why we need to carry out uh, such surveys from the big data or from the household statistics so that we can inform the policy makers on how to deal with the e-waste. Without uh, much further ado, I want to invite uh, Ms. Elif Coxal, who is an economist at the OECD 
and she currently serves as the working party in the measurement and analysis of the digital economy. Um, <coughs> Ms. Elif, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, everyone. I am standing between you and the lunch, so I hope you'll bear with me and enjoy this presentation where I have been asked to present you the new measurement challenges in the digital economy, uh, focusing on the thematics that, has been, that have been underlined by uh, the chair of EGH. Uh, to do so, I will start with the, by giving you a few trends in terms of uh, convergence and connectivity in the digital economy. Then we will dive into the topics uh, mainly on children online, children child protection online, trust in digital economy, and cross-border e-commerce issues. Then I will show a few examples about how can we complete official statistics with the internet-based private data sources. And finally, I will conclude with the work ahead that we are conducting at the OECD to deal all these issues and some more. Well, uh, digital economy, as uh, we heard yesterday from the Vodafone presentation, and we all know that uh, it's mainly characterized by a big convergence between the former distinct parts of the communication ecosystem. These involve fixed and broadband, fixed and wireless network connections, voice and data, telecom and broadcasting. I guess these issues will be discussed more broadly in the next session in the afternoon. But uh, the digital economy is also characterized by uh, increased connectivity between all of us, between individuals. Today, 74% of individuals at the OECD for which we had the data connect to the internet on a daily basis. In some countries, the ratios are really close to the saturation every day. Connectivity between individuals but also between devices. M2M SIM card penetration in G20 reached 10 per 100 inhabitants in 2017 where we used the GSMA data as compared to 2.7 back in 2012. M2M is part of the IoT infrastructure. M2M is fundamental. And we see that now we have important players in the worldwide arena when we can have all worldwide data. We can see that China today accounts for 44% of the M2M connections worldwide, which is three times the share of US. Now, how can we improve the IoT measurement? To do so, this is a very new field. We have established a task force in my working party in conjunction with, the, with different uh, colleagues dealing with the more in the IoT issues to develop statistical definitions and nomenclatures. What do we mean by IoT? How can we measure beyond the M2M communication? We would like to have an overview about the existing data sources, both from official statistics and from private data sources. Some countries have questions in their household surveys on do you have uh, any connected device? Uh, do you use the internet to connect to your devices at home? But these are very limited. They don't necessarily give us information on the frequency, on the intensity. So these should be stock taken and then uh, hopefully come up with the OECD model survey which can contain a new module. So far, our 2014 revision doesn't contain a module, but we are aware of the fact that we need such a guidance for all countries, members, and the partner countries to assess and to measure IoT. Another topic which concerns all of us is the children and online protection. Children are increasingly younger online. Our PISA data, OECD PISA data, show that Students who access the internet before the age six or below, the ratio of those students increased in all countries, almost all countries between 2012 and 15. Children are younger and vulnerable. It's hard to read, all, but this is a figure from the EU Kids Online Initiative, mainly European, but also extended to other countries, such as Brazil where we see that the 14, for instance, an, an example is that uh, 14 to 16 year old children, 43% of them had actually contact with someone who they've never met before. They are vulnerable and the risks increase. We see more and more 
people facing to websites where hate messages are diffused or different information related to eating disorders or other problems. So our children are facing difficulties and problems in terms of uh, security. To improve the measurement, the OECD's 2014 revision of the model survey on household individuals incorporated a module which can be ready to be implemented at the household level. We believe that these questions on risks and parental control can only be asked to the countries, to the, at the country level, to the households, and not to the individuals. Children may have difficulties and reluctance to respond, so we believe that these questions are more accurate to measure at the household level. And we are also working very recently, we started the work to re revise our 2012 recommendation, the OECD's recommendation to protect child children online, to update the policymakers with the new risks. We believe that the, 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 most of our countries believe that the policy is still relevant, the recommendation is still relevant, but the risks are not up to date. So with all the risks which I just showed from the EU Kids Online and beyond, we need to go a little bit more in detail and include risks such as cyberbullying, cyber grooming, hateful content, radicalization, harmful advice, or IoT related. Now, trust is crucial in the digital economy. This is another uh, and more broad problem where we need to measure trust. Trust for me is as important as Bitcoin in a digital economy, it's a good currency. Without trust, we don't do all our activities online. Trust has three pillars, security, privacy, and consumer protection, and it's very hard to accurately measure. What we can say from our existing data is that security incidents experienced by individuals actually increase with the intensity of use and with the educational attainment. It's very, it may sound counterintuitive. As we are more educated, we can protect ourselves better, but indeed, because people that are highly educated make intensive use of ICTs and the internet. They, they are more active on, online. They are facing more risks and experience more security incidents. Privacy concerns. Big data session yesterday showed us that it's very good for most of us to have uh, tailor-made advertising when we look for information to come up uh, with the the advice is very related to our previous research, but the European data show that uh, in many countries, this is a concern. In Germany, 80% of individuals expressed concern about these tailored advertising processes. Now, the both dimensions impact trust in digital economy, and in our very recent survey on the trust in peer-to-peer -peer platforms shows that only 10%, a little bit less than 10% of individuals said, okay, I would buy in a peer-to-peer -peer platform without trust. So this is a general expression which has been uh, recognized by all individuals in terms of peer-to-peer -peer platforms. Now, what we can do to improve trust? To do so, we established a recent task force together with the IoT one I just mentioned to strengthen the evidence base for security and privacy. We would like to promote a better definition, an internationally agreed definition of personal data breach notifications to have better data, comparable data. And we would like to survey digital security incidents and risk management in businesses. These are not related to households and individuals, but we believe that the outcome of this work have, will have a good impact and strong impact at the household and individuals level as well. Cross-border e-commerce. Usually e-commerce, this is a hot topic. We would like to know which is the share of cross-border e-commerce in our total e-commerce statistics. We can have this information from the existing official data sources when countries collect such data, like here at the countries included in the European statistical system and Canada. However, e-commerce data are volatile, and we don't know necessarily the value of the cross-border e-commerce sales and purchases. So we believe that the 
official data that we can collect from the surveys can be completed, augmented, enhanced by private data sources. As discussed at the EGH meeting, OECD has this recent initiative with the Spanish BBVA, it's a Spanish bank, which, have, which has credit card information representative of 63% of uh, Spanish households. By linking their credit card information to their ICT survey, by drawing the samples, they can come up with this figure where we can identify the payments by merchant country. Now, this information, it's impossible to get from official surveys. This information is very valuable, but they, it is not 100% representative, so we always have this trade-off between the two issues by the time we resort to private data sources. Now, private data or internet-based data obviously provide, has a good advantage of providing timely metrics. And here I show you a figure using burning glass data where we can see the ICT online job postings, for instance, between 2013 and 16, and the trends. We can also have information about the length of these positions. It's a very interesting discussion about the shortage of ICT specialists. If you have a shortage, you would expect longer durations, so it's easy to track this information from private data sources. And we can have data for a large number of countries. So the online labor index, which shows here the map, provides information, just an example, on the platform ena enabled employment and the occupations that are mostly provided available on these platforms. Now, in terms of the work ahead, the OECD has started a quite important horizontal project which is called Going Digital, which has, a several, which has several dimensions, but what I want to emphasize here is the measurement pillar. The measurement pillar will sustain not only jobs and skills, productivity, competition, market openness, inclusive digital transformation, but also other topics, be it in trade, digital trade, be it on uh, trust, so I really invite you to follow us and make sure that uh, you have uh, access to all our derivatives online. And I would like to finish by saying that next week we will launch our STI scoreboard, Science, Technology and Innovation Scoreboard 2017. I don't know if it will raise that many excitement as uh, the ITU report which has been just launched today. We have been expecting uh, with great excitement. I hope you will enjoy this publication as well, at least in terms of what data are available in other countries, how can we track, how can we monitor all these new measurement challenges, and what can be done then in our own countries. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Ms. Elif, uh, for aligning their recommendations, and I would like to encourage everyone, uh, the presentations will be set in the online, so you can peruse more further, <laughs> and also, if you have any further questions, maybe you can ask uh, the, pre the panelists directly, so that you can be able to include uh, some of these uh, future work in our surveys or any other research that we are doing. And now, I would like to open the floor quickly. I know we, we are almost very hungry. So I'll take uh, three questions and then we give it back to the panelists. So any questions? Yes, the gentleman behind. شكرا سيد الرئيس مداخلة تتعلق بالاحتياجات من بيانات جديدة للاقتصاد الرقمي وعلى وجه الخصوص النفاذ الإلكتروني إويز باعتبار أن تحتوي على نسب عالية من المواد السامة وغير المتحللة مثل الزئبق والرصاص لذا بات من الضروري العمل على توفير معطيات حول حجم هذه النفاذ الإلكترونية وكيفية التعامل معها لسيما على مستوى الأسر وذلك قصد اتخاذ القرارات المناسبة والسبل الكفيلة بالحد من المخاطر الناجمة عن تراكم هذه النفايات كما أن هذه المعطيات تمكن من إنتاج مؤشرات متابعة تنفيذ السياسات ذات الصيلة بالتحديات المطروحة بشأن المحافظة على المحيط والبيئة واعتبارا لأهمية توفير معطيات إحصائية حول النفايات الإلكترونية يقترح إثراء قائمة المؤشرات الأساسية 
التي تم تحديدها في إطار الشراكة الدولية لقياس مدى تقدم الدول نحو مجتمع المعلومات بمؤشر جديد بمؤشر بمؤشر جديد يحدد كيفية تتعامل الأسر مع النفايات الإلكترونية وطريقة التخلص منها على غرار أجهزة الحاسوب والهواتف الخلوية والطابعات والباتريات وغيرها وذلك من خلال إضافة سؤال بالاستبيان الموجه للأسر حول النفاذ التكنولوجية المعلومات والاتصال واستعمالاتها يقترح أن يكون السؤال على النحو التالي كيف يتم التخلص من النفاذ الإلكترونية ثلاثة فرضيات وضعها في حاويات مخصصة للنفاذ الإلكترونية وضعها في الحاويات غير مخصصة للنفاذ الإلكترونية اتلافها بحرقها أو ما شابه ذلك كما يقترح تدارس هذه المسألة والتعمق فيها عبر المنتدى على الخط لفريق الخبراء الذي يعنى بمؤشرات الأسر في المرحلة القادمة لأشغاله وشكرا Okay, thank you. Kindly also introduce yourself so that we can be able to know where the question is coming from. Any other comment or question? Are we very hungry that uh, we are unable to <laughs> make any comments? <laughs> So as we think through uh, from what the gentleman has, oh, if I say something, China wants to say something? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, uh, please allow us to express our uh, thanks to the uh, three speakers. Uh, you, you have given us a very wonderful presentation and uh, uh, introduced us the most important progress in the side of the uh, households uh, development in the ICT sectors. Uh, we just wanted to uh, give a proposal that we can um, have discussions on the top topics of the e-commerce and some digital content services, which is now becoming more pop, uh, popular in, in daily family use. Uh, for, for example, the, for the e-commerce application, uh, nowadays, most of the uh, family users are using uh, their uh, mobile phones to, to, uh, to do uh, shopping. Just like China, we have just ended the uh, double, double one, double one uh, network online shopping uh, festival. Uh, in one day, most, uh, most of the people are doing their business on uh, smartphones. Another topic is about the, uh, you know, uh, the digital content services, uh, which is related to the, I, the new types of the media services, such as IPTV, uh, uh, along with the traditional, uh, traditional uh, media, media services, uh, such as cable TV. So nowadays, more and more people are, like, are likely to use the new uh, terminals and the new services, so, uh, you know, flow media services uh, upon their, uh, based on their uh, broadband infrastructure. So uh, we are wondering if we can introduce, we are wondering if we can introduce the, the new types of uh, digital content services for family users. So in our EGH, uh, EGH uh, group meeting, if we can consider the possibility, the possibility of introducing the new uh, digital content services. So uh, I'm wondering if uh, Mr. Arif can uh, give us some your, your, your reviews on this subject. Thank you. Thank you, China. Uh, Brazil? Thank you very much. I'd first like to congratulate all three speakers for the very insightful presentations. They were very useful indeed. I'm especially interested in the topic of child online protection and would like to ask about the methodological approach that is being proposed. We understand that this is a very important and complex uh, subject to be measured. We have been conducting uh, surveys in Brazil, standalone surveys in Brazil for many years now. And we also understand, although this is a very complex indeed, that it's important to give voice to children and to understand what they have to say. So I was wondering what is being proposed at a methodological approach, how this data is proposed to be collected at the household level, because we often understand that there is a difference in the reports in what uh, parents say and what children say, although the, both perspectives are very important indeed. So I'd be very interested to learn what is being proposed in this sense. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Let me give a chance to the panelists before I do uh, one more round. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Thank you very much. I will uh, start uh, as far as I am concerned. Um, regarding the the e-commerce comments raised by China, uh, I didn't have time to go in detail, but at the OECD we also conducted a, a study, a recent study, to define e-commerce and how can we distinguish from e-payments. So uh, I, I will invite you to look at this work. Inclusion of uh, new IT services in the data collection is definitely possible, but I will let the chair uh, answer on that. What, uh, what, I would, uh, what we could do in this respect is to add the item. Do you have, uh, in, in terms of uh, appliances, and then do you use uh, this and that services? On the child online protection, it's very good to give um, the voice to the children, bearing in mind the fact that they may express different views as compared to, so maybe the right approach in this respect would be to combine the two. The OECD model survey has the module in which the risks are assessed separately from the tools that parents employ to protect their children. So uh, this is more the other side of the, of the medal. So this is important to assess what do parents do, what they can do. But on the other hand, as per the risk assessment, yes, we can include, depending on the coverage and the population of the surveys, if there is a scope to include the population, of course, the questions can be asked to the children. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Kiss. Okay, and I will... Maybe you respond to the first question on e-waste. Um, well, I think if you want to recycle or dispose of, of the hazardous materials which are inside of almost any equipment of e-waste, um, you need to do this through policies. And in these policies, you need to define a minimum, st like minimum standards how the e-waste should be recycled and how the hazardous materials should be um, taken care of. And then, of course, if you have the policies on, so what's the minimum standard? So what, what do the recyclers have to comply with at a minimum level? You also need you know, data in order to measure whether all the waste is being recycled with these standards. And next to that, you would also need enforcement to ensure that the facilities which, have, which comply really comply with these minimum standards. So this uh, triangle of data and, and, and policies and enforcement is very important in this, in, this, in this regard. Regarding data, I would like to mention to you that um, around two years ago, the, the Partnership for, Me for Measuring ICT for, de for Development has published you know, guidelines for statisticians to make and to produce e-waste statistics. So if you want to, uh, to, to you know, make this data or benchmark yourself with other regions, please follow these guidelines. And, um, and regarding, uh, so, and also in these, in these guidelines, we have made indicators which are sensible to, uh, to you know, be, well, well, to benchmark yourself with other countries and to find uh, the best uh, performing countries across the globe when there's data available, of course. And, uh, th and, th and, th and thirdly, I think it, it really makes sense to also have like indicators on, you know, household behavior in, in this regard, because uh, like I mentioned before, it all starts usually with the first action of the household. So some data on that would be surely needed and uh, we can maybe like include this in the, in the, in the guidelines that we have on e-waste st statistics. Thank you, Alex, you have something to yeah. say? Uh, thank you, Mr. Ms. Moderator. Well, just following up, uh, following up what uh, Kiz has just said up on e-waste, I, I would like to recall that uh, we have uh, two very important uh, frameworks for measuring the information society. One is on the household surveys and the other one on business uh, surveys. And of course, that these two uh, uh, instruments are very important and should be used to include 
or to piggyback some questions on e-waste disposal, for instance. Related to China comment on uh, e-commerce, I would like to say that this year, I uh, think that uh, the EJ8 has made a very important step in approving four new indicators that, uh, in a way, uh, respond what uh, China has mentioned. First, in terms of, method, of methods of delivery, how we receive products or service that we bought online, if you receive, receive it physically or if it's an application, a music, a movie, you download the content of the product or service that we have uh, purchased, purchased. And also in terms of methods of payment. These are two indicators very important uh, and I think that it is a very important step that we gave. Related to digital content service that was also highlighted by China, I think that this is a very good opportunity to engage our member states in defining new indicators, new concepts that is open for discussion during 2018. So I would like to invite all of you that has interest in defining indicators for measuring digital content service that this is the time for us to make contributions. Uh, related to child online protection that was brought by Brazil, uh, I think that uh, for those participating more time in the EJ8, in the previous years we have uh, tried to include some indicators in the household uh, survey we had some countries that uh, conducted some pilots, and the results in terms of measuring risks and opportunities uh, are not so good because this is a very specific type of subject and requires a more specific framework. And that's uh, why I think that uh, OSD has highlighted the European Union Kids Online Survey framework which is a more standalone type of a tool to make this type of assessment. And now, uh, just for you, your, to know, you to know that UNICEF and London School of Economics has launched the Global Kids Online Survey, which is a, a framework for measuring risks and opportunities online and other uh, child online protection issues. And now we have, uh, further European countries uh, measuring. In Latin America, we have Latin American Kids Online uh, Network, including uh, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, uh, Costa Rica, that are, and Uruguay too, that are currently uh, measuring. And we have other countries like Colombia and Mexico that has shown the interest in measuring uh, ch child online protection based on this framework. So. I would say that it is very difficult to include all the dimensions that is needed to measure child online protection in existing household survey. But again, this is an opportunity for us to bring this discussion to the EG8, because as you saw in the future work, this was one of the topics that was selected or prioritized to be discussed during 2018. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Alexandra. Due to the limit of time, I would like to add you for any questions, please uh, contact the panelists directly because we are already running out of time. So I would like to thank all the panelists here and I would like to take the floor back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, also deep uh, discussion because this is where is the, the key uh, answer of all our questions. How to develop new indicator to follow up the new technologies and to follow up uh, new process. Uh, I'm happy also to hear that uh, Wi-Fi access, e-commerce, uh, cybersecurity, IoT, e-waste e regulation framework will be taken in consideration in next year uh, and next uh, report. And that's very important because if we stuck to the uh, mobile penetration, I think uh, the market will have a saturation soon and then uh, no, no progress will be shown in the, in the report. And that's, that's good that we, we, we follow the technology 
we follow also the, the methodology of uh, learning and so on to, to progress and to make this report uh, useful for the decision maker. So thank you very much and uh, this uh, we end this uh, session.